Must survive this day. Must survive this day. Good morning, YouTube. Oh, tired, tired, but we will make it. We will make it. Oh, my goodness. Glorious day, glorious day to go get a run in. Gonna do three miles today, nice and easy, just bopping along in the Skechers. That's right, taking the Skechers back out today. Give you my thoughts on how they feel after the run. And before I go though, quick little roll call from everyone. <laughs> It's getting, it's, it's humbling. It's just humbling is the bottom line. Everyone who's following me on Strava, just in the last, like, I don't know, three hours, like, I'm just going to give some shout outs to Dave, to Calvin, to Madison, to Alexander, to Luke, to Jules, to Robert, to Matthew, to Jared. It just like the list goes on and on. And it's an, it's humbling. And I thank you for connecting there because I'm sensing that there's a lot of different runners joining up on Strava, joining up here on YouTube. And when I say that I mean from an experience level, whether you're a beginner or you've been going for, or maybe you've been running for 40 years, whatever the case may be, um, it's, it's, there's a lot of different types of runners joining. I can sense that. And, and high schoolers, shout out to all the high schoolers out there. Uh, remember there's a live stream coming up on Wednesday night, this upcoming Wednesday, 7 PM mountain time. And yes, we're increasing the speed of our internet so that you all can tune in with no technical difficulties like we had last time. Uh, and so the first, how we're going to do it, just a reminder, we're going to do an hour live stream where I'm going to be answering questions, but we're going to break it into different topics. So the first 20 minutes is going to be a topic, second 20 minutes, another topic, and then the third 20 minutes, the, the last third of the, of the live stream will be an open Q&A where you can ask anything about life, about running, about shoes, about travel, about whatever you want to ask. But what I'm thinking, okay, the first topic is going to be about high school running, high schoolers that are interested in running in college. That'll be your opportunity to jump in and just ask questions about, you know, maybe 5K training because that's what you race in cross country in high school. So that'll be the first 20 minutes. And yes, I'm curious to hear from all of you, what should we focus on? This is not the question of the day, but what should we focus on the second 20 minutes of the hour live stream this Wednesday? Day. Comment below with your ideas and I would appreciate it and we'll get the ideas flowing and see what people are sensing because there's so much we can talk about but I want to focus the conversation. Okay, here we go into Skechers. Let's do this. Let's do this. Stretching has uh, quickly evolved into a game of dodgeball. We will be putting stretching on hold on this fine Sunday. By the way, Skechers did be good. Skechers did be good. Specific marathon training workouts. You are in the right place if you want to learn about what I'm going to be doing in preparation for my first marathon in 2019. And a couple of you mentioned yesterday that I forgot to tell you the update on grandmas. I'm just going to read you the email. I'm going to read you the email. Here it goes. Thank you for your interest in joining the elite field at the 2019 Grandma's Marathon and submitting your running resume. The qualifying time for a male to gain an elite entry into our marathon is a sub 228 marathon or a sub 110 half marathon run within the last two years. Do you have any half marathons planned in the next month or so where you might lower your PR? I won't, I won't read the whole email. Basically, folks, solo here in Denver, and if you've been watching the channel a while, you already know this, but I ran a 111 
two months ago at Elevation, which actually I heard recently that if you run that kind of time at Elevation, you can at least take off two minutes for a half marathon. So it was probably worth about a 109, uh, really, uh, because you know when you're at elevation, like that conversion down to sea level, it's amazing what sea level can do for your speed. Therefore, oh well, that it is what it is. Like I, I, I ran 111, I did not run 110, and this race director uh, representative for the Grandma's Marathon is telling me that I need to break 110. So. I don't know if Grandma's is going to be on the docket for 2019. I don't know if I can break 110 in like the next month or two. Like I don't, yeah, oh, it's like it's it's probably too quick. So stay tuned for the update on what marathon I get into. I don't know. I don't know. Now let's set Grandma's aside for now. We'll come back to Grandma's at some point and let's focus in on specific marathon workouts and. Listen, I've I've raced many 50Ks. I've done many training runs over 25 miles and like 30 miles, 35 miles. Yes, even a 40 mile training run uh, last year. So I'm exper I'm used to that long distance kind of slogging it out type feeling that you know takes over your body after oh gosh 22 24 miles where you're just like okay i gotta get i gotta be tough now and really uh focus on what i'm doing in order to keep moving forward at an efficient uh pace and clip but before we dive in to the workouts i have to read this this is from jim a vlog viewer it just came in today on the vlog a couple days ago that gave an overview of my marathon training approach Go check it out, upper right hand corner, but Jim said this, running a marathon is different than racing a marathon. Your plan should be applicable to what you are trying to accomplish, i.e., do you want to finish a marathon or BQ slash PR? BQ stands for Boston Qualifier, in case you didn't know that, and Jim, it's a brilliant observation. I like That's such a great point, because if you're trying to finish a marathon, yeah, your training is going to be, I would say, a little less anaerobic, a little less on the intensity side, and probably a little more focused on the aerobic side. For me, moving forward in 2019, just so you know, I am a big, big believer in aerobic over anaerobic. Guys, <laughs> I ran that 111 at elevation solo with zero zero speed training in the last 10 years basically i'm exaggerating a little bit but not that much i'm telling you your aerobic base is more important way more important than your anaerobic development which comes through speed work interval training uh fart lick training that type of training i'm telling you listen okay and i'm not a scientist you know you can do whatever you want, but I, I, I continue to be a little surprised, and I know I'm getting a little amped up here, but I continue to be a little surprised when I follow people on Strava or on YouTube or on Twitter or wherever I'm following people, and I'm just I'm just observing their training from afar, so I'm, I, I'd be on it. You know, I know I'm not there watching them train, but I just see their workouts, and I'm wondering, wait a minute, do they have, do they have a big enough aerobic base to build the, the the pyramid of training to get to the top of the mountain, the starting line in peak fitness. Because if that base, if that aerobic base is not big enough, your pyramid is going to be much lower. Okay, you're not going to be able to build as big of a pyramid. Is that making sense? Think of the pyramids in Egypt. Like the bigger the base, the bigger the pyramid you can be, you can build through your training. So the the more aerobic and what is aerobic training? Oh my goodness. We're not going to get into the science of it, but aerobic training is in layman's terms, it's <laughs> I don't want to say it's long slow distances. That's how some people categorize it. I would put it into the category of um good breathing meaning you're you're it's a steady breathing that you have you're definitely not burning in the lungs but you're it's not an easy day either it's a steady uh pace a very steady pace for me if i can go do a 7 minute um, a, a 7 minute per mile 20 mile long run that is a perfect pace for, uh, for just getting in a solid long run, which builds my aerobic base bigger and bigger. Again, we'll, we'll talk more about specifics of aerobic versus anaerobic, but 
All right, I'm setting that aside. So for me, just so you know, my strategy is 80% aerobic, 20% anaerobic when it comes to long distance training, whether it's 50Ks, which I've done in the past, or yes, now in 2019, marathon training. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we got to build the foundation before we can put up the house. All right. Okay. Moving on to specific workouts and okay, <laughs> I'm getting excited. You, I also know that within the 20% anaerobic training segments of my uh, of my training block leading up to my first marathon, I know I have to do speed training. I know, I know that. I don't love speed training. Like I, I definitely don't love going on the track very often, but I realize that it is important. I really, really do. For example, the world record holder in the marathon. Many of you already know his name, Kipchoge uh, from Kenya before his Berlin uh, world record marathon race uh, last year. He did a 15 by 1 kilometer 1K repeat workout. 15 by 1K. That's quite a bit. I, now, I don't know what his rest was. I'm going to make a guess. It was about 60 seconds, maybe 90. Nah, I bet it was about 60 seconds. That's my guess. If somebody knows, let me know down in the comments. That's what Kipchoge did. He was the, He's the world record holder in the marathon, the fastest ever in, in human history. So I, I see, I know that it is important to go anaerobic in marathon training, but I would also encourage people to really consider the aerobic. Okay, so one of the first specific workouts that I will be integrating into my speed training for the marathon is a fart lick specifically a longer fart lick so a 60 minute fart lick and what is a fart lick basically it's not it's interval training in quotes meaning you are you're doing basic basically a 60 minute run with surges within where you're speeding up your pace within that 60 minute time frame for me i'm probably gonna do five minutes on two minutes off meaning five minutes of higher intensity, two minutes of kind of a recovery pace. Five minutes higher intensity, two minutes recovery pace. And yes, it's not, the pacing will be important. I will probably shoot for what I could run a, um, a two mile in. So I could run a two mile, let's say in, uh, at this point in my life about, you know, let's say around 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, around 10 minutes. So I will, I'll try and hold like five minute pace through that five minute segment of the on. And then I transition to two minutes of off where I'm just kind of cruising, recovering, let the legs recover, let my breathing recover. But what's more important than really the pacing is the length of the fart lick. So getting your body used to going at a higher intensity for longer, which is the marathon. The marathon pushes you beyond the limits that you ever thought you could go. And so anyway, that's, that's the first workout that I will be integrating into my speed training, my interval training for the marathon. Okay. All right. Another workout idea that I am going to use, I'm going to call it the cresting the hill practice, cresting the hill practice. It's very difficult to find a marathon that is completely flat. We all know that Berlin is flat. Rotterdam, I've heard, is pretty flat. Uh, Chicago, of course, is flat. Houston is flat, pretty flat. Um, New York is not. Boston is not. Uh, London, not, not so much. Uh, it, it's pretty flat, but not so much. Every big marathon usually has a slight uphill section and it might only be a half mile long it might be a mile where you rise up you know even if it's just 20 meters so my workout idea that i will be doing is six by 1200 meter repeats with full jog back recovery back to the starting line and the focus of this of this workout is your form it's not going anaerobic because you're going to have so much rest jogging back to the starting line so you're going to completely recover uh with your breathing by the time you start the next rep but what you're going to do is you're going to find a hill and i'm not talking a steep hill i'm talking a hundred meters maybe 50 meters just a slight uphill section that is 800 meters in length and then followed by 400 meters of flat 
or even possibly a little bit of downhill would be preferred. So the idea is to get your body used to cresting the hill. So getting your, your form together, especially late in the race, when you're at, you know, past 18 miles and you're starting to get really tired and you come up on Heartbreak Hill, is that right? That's the Boston Hill, Heartbreak Hill, where you're going up, but you're like, oh, this hurts. I'm in pain, but I practiced it before the marathon. I know I can crest over this hill, not in complete shambles without dying. Does that make sense? So it's going to be 800 meters up to the top of the hill, 400 meters up and over the hill. So you're going to work on transitioning and firing different muscle groups because uphill muscles are different than downhill muscles. And Basically, I believe it will really, really help those moments when you find a hill in a marathon race, especially late in the race. Does that make sense? And then a full jog back recovery to the start six times, maybe eight times later in training. Um, I'm excited for that one. I'm really excited for that one because you know me, like I'm, I'm pretty obsessed with form and biomechanics in 2019, just making sure my, my form is as, as solid as possible. Okay, moving on. The one hour tempo run, the one hour tempo run. What is the purpose of the one hour tempo workout? Negative splitting. A lot of you commented a couple days ago. Okay, not a lot of you, a handful of you commented about the importance of attempting to negative split in your marathon. If you can train yourself to remain calm on the starting line and calm, especially the first 5K of a race, the first three miles when there's lots of crowds, lots of cheering, the adrenaline is gonna wanna push you to go too fast, to go out too hard. And what happens is you go out too hard and then when you hit 13 miles, it starts to hurt and your body starts to tie up. So in training, if we can practice negative splitting a tempo run, beautiful, beautiful. And so how do you do that? Basically, if you can run, and so let's say I'm doing a 10 mile tempo run, I would wanna do the first five miles in, let's say 31 minutes, and the second five miles in 29 minutes. Now I'm not doing the math quite right in my head. I'm trying to think what pacing that is, but basically the goal is to negative split your tempo run so that you're running in control the first half and the second half you feel good enough you get to that halfway point you check your watch and you look down you're like oh okay i'm approaching halfway i feel decent i think i'm gonna try and pick it up just a little bit this next mile six and then okay mile seven still feeling good boom go 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 does that make sense? So negative splitting a tempo run will help in help you so much in making sure you don't go out too fast in your marathon. My last idea, and this isn't necessarily a specific workout, but rather maintenance. Because when you're training for a marathon, you're doing longer runs, which sometimes they can end up being a little slower because you're going a little further. You don't want to lose your fast twitch muscles that are in your legs. We all are born with a certain amount of fast twitch muscles. Some, like sprinters, they have a lot of them. And I don't know, again, all the ana on the anatomical level what they're called, but I know that they exist, these fast twitch muscles. And so, as long distance runners, we want to recruit. It's called recruiting your fast twitch muscles. So, how do you do that? Strides. I like to do six to eight strides after a long run. So I'll get back to my car, I'll find a nice flat dirt section preferably. Uh, you could do it on pavement, but I'd prefer to do it on dirt. Uh, and I'll do 150 meters. So basically one and a half football fields and I'll go not all out, I'd say 90 to 95% of your all out sprint. So not all out, 90 to 95% where you're striding and remember focusing on your form and by doing this once a week, maybe twice, but if you're not used to going fast, don't do it twice a week. Start with it, definitely just do once a week at the beginning. And then you can integrate maybe twice a week in like a month or six weeks from now, but start off with just once a week, six to eight 150 meter strides to maintain as much of those as many of those fast twitch muscles as possible and that ladies and gentlemen will be crucial 
the lat and this especially applies to people that are trying to get a Boston qualifier or a PR like we want to we want to make sure we're not losing all of the speed that we have by doing so many long runs and so many you know tempo runs where we're not going fast 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 one last workout I, I, I almost forgot four by 3k repeats with two minutes rest so four by two mile repeats with two minutes rest I actually don't know exactly what the benefit of this workout it like i know obviously anaerobically it would be pretty good but i've seen quite a few of my teammates do this type of workout in preparation for a marathon and yes a couple of them have already qualified for the olympic trials in 2020 so anyway i i, I need to do more investigation into uh that workout but it's just one that i'm going to throw out there i i probably will attempt it four by 3k repeats that's that's quite a bit with two minutes rest uh so that that's a doozy that's a doozy of a workout okay Keyword, workout, keyword, workout, and question of the day, uh, what is your go-to speed slash anaerobic workout, interval workout, whatever you want to call it, uh, leading up to your marathon? Like, what is your bread and butter, butter my bread, butter my bread workout for your marathon training if you have marathon training experience? If you don't have marathon training experience, don't worry, you don't have to answer. But I would encourage you to go down and start asking questions based on people's comments that do have experience training for a marathon. A lot of, well, not a lot of us, many people are amping up and ramping up for the London Marathon and the, uh, I think the Brighton Marathon over in the UK. And then of course the Boston Marathon. And of course there's so many marathons coming up in the spring, but that is the question of the day. Thanks for chiming in. I know I just threw a lot at you and we can talk more about this at the live stream on Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Sound good? Thanks for bearing with me. I know that was a lot. Oh, I love you guys. Woo! Oh, we're just, we're, we're getting ready. We're getting ready to get ready. Oh, love you. Love you. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow. Oh.